seventh packet in your hands, and what I've done is I have provided you with basically the thing that I asked you to do on your own, um, um, just with all the angles and all the points, okay? And this is what you were supposed to do for homework. And if you did it for homework, once you had plotted those points, um, once you had plotted all those points, you as well, Michael, can you just put your phone away? Um, so, once you plotted those points, so once you plotted those points, you were supposed to graph them. And when you graphed those points, what did you guys find? They were waves, right? And so if you turn to the second page of your handout, you'll see waves that should have been exactly what you got when you graphed it. Now, I've got the words cosine and sine, but right next to cosine, I want you to put um, x coordinate. So go ahead right there, in parentheses or whatever, right next to the word cosine in your packet on the second page, on the second page of your packet. Go ahead and write the word x coordinates. And for the sign, right next to sign, what do you put right next to the sign? The y coordinates. Okay? So you should have gotten these exact graphs, right? The x coordinates and the y coordinates. And now, it can be easy when you get something like this to just be like, okay, that's math class. We've been talking about waves. We did this thing and we got waves. Cool. Moving forward, right? But I don't want us to do just that just now, this time. What I want us to do is something a little different. Cue the shovel. Nice. Good job. Um, what I want us to do is something a little different. And a good friend of mine told me recently, I forget exactly who it was, said, we, we can't just learn a lesson and then just go on to learn the next thing. We need time to reflect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reflect a little bit. So why did we get waves? Why? Why did we get waves? Why? why? Yeah? Why? He's like, I got this. I got this softball right here. I know exactly why we got waves. <laughs> All right. So why did we get waves, y'all? Why apostrophe all? <laughs> Why? What? It's like the, the X and Y are like That's a cool thing to notice. Nice. So, why did we get waves? Well, this is a very good question. How did we get these graphs? How did we get these graphs? Through points. Well, we had a circle, and we were plotting the points around a circle, right? But then when we were plotting the graphs, we didn't just go around in a circle again. We went forward on the horizontal axis, right? We went forward on the horizontal axis. And what was the horizontal axis? It was you know, the D, uh, degrees. degrees, degrees, right? right? The horizontal axis is the degrees in the circle. It went up to 360, right? So we weren't just going around a circle anymore. We were now going around a circle with our points but we were also moving forward on our axis. Does that make sense? So we weren't, we were going around in a circle and moving forward simultaneously. And that's how we got our waves. I think I get it. Nice. Did, the, did, the, did the waves make a whole circle when it goes together? You can think about it that way. You'd have to like distort it in an interesting way. But now, so, so we're, listen to this. We're going, shh, we're going around a circle and we're moving forward at the same time, and that's how we got waves, right? That's exactly, I'm just describing what happened. I'm not telling you exactly why, I'm just saying that's what happened, right? So now let's take a look. In order to understand this further, we're going to need a demonstration. And for this demonstration, I'm going to need two volunteers. Oh, Who would like to volunteer? Oh, I'll take Isaiah and this boy. And I, I love oh, this very but I'm going to take these two guys oh, just for opposite sides of the classroom. Sorry, now, you two, who's the more athletic? Me. Who's more athletic? Okay, so you're, you're an athlete, he's an athlete. I don't know, okay, let's not size up. It's okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Now, 
out. I bet you don't get to stand by lava this time, Isaiah. Nah. I'm already too hot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got money on Jordan? I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, you guys aren't doing anything like that. It's not even like that, guys. Okay. So, I need. Okay. Um, Isaiah. Yep. You're you're gonna you're gonna I, I need to you to have a marker. Here's a gun. Here's a marker. You are gonna stand right over there, Jordan. Stand right over there. Isaiah, I need you right here. And I also need one other thing. I need a ball. Oh, who's got a ball? Do you have a ball? How are you gonna ball? Be the ball. Be the ball. Be the ball. A cookie. That'll work. Do you mind if I touch the cookie? What the? Okay. I have clean hands. I put your hands all over the Okay. So this is a ball like object. Now. Alright. So this is what I'm going to do. You guys prepared? No. Okay. I'm going to do two things simultaneously. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the cookie around in a circle. Just like this. You see? Just a regular circle. Yeah, I was going to say, kind of like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. Nice. So I'm going to move the cookie around in a circle, and I'm also going to walk forward, mm -hmm. just like this. That's all I'm going to do. No magic tricks, no extra cookies like the video, no mirrors, no smoke, none of that. Just a cookie and a man and two volunteers. Does it make sense? Okay, and a dream. A cookie and a dream. Now, this is what our volunteers are going to do first. Isaiah, what you're going to do, or for you, I'm going to walk forward like this, okay? You're going to keep me honest, okay? So you've got to confirm that I'm moving it around in a circle. I'm not doing anything weird, like trying to, like, play pretend, trying to do anything strange. You guys understand this? So, Jordan, you're going to make sure I'm moving the cookie around in a circle, okay? So you got to watch the cookie, eyes on the cookie, all right? Now, Isaiah, what you're going to do is you are going to follow the center of the cookie with the marker. So you're going to trace. So you got to make sure the marker works. You got to yeah. make sure. Okay, it works. It works good. Oh All right. So there's no no trick uh, markers here, guys. So it's just a marker, a cookie, and a, a spotter. All right? You got yeah. this? Yeah. All right. Now, you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Watch. So I'm going to move in a circle, and I'm going to walk forward simultaneously. All right, ready? Let me get the center okay. first. You ready? Get the center. Three, two, one. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> we lost that that was, guys, what did we what did we draw? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Not a wave. Oh wait, I don't know what happened over here. Oh, don't worry about that. Should, should, we, should, should, we, should we, we do it again, guys? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Alright, All right. All right, we need to do it one more time. <laughs> we need to do it one more time. Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's get a better marker, right? Let's get okay, that's a good one. Nice and bright. I think I think Jordan's will be worse though. Okay, do you wanna try it? Alright, 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 okay, Jordan. Alright. Let's give him a shot. Give him a shot. Okay. I'll make sure you're right. Turn down. Now you gotta make sure that you gotta make sure you gotta I'm, uh, you gotta make sure I'm moving in a circle, Jordan. Right? Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, yes, three, man. two, one. Nice. Oh, I think good that was done. Right, you guys both did a good job. All right, let's give a round of applause for our volunteers and for our cookies. Thank you. Good job. Cool. So, so guys, check it out. What just happened? What did we draw? A wave. So check it out. Listen, when I'm when I'm moving the the cookie in a circle and walking forward, am I doing it at two dimensions or three dimensions? Three, three, three dimensions, right? It's up, down, left, right, and forward all at the same time. So three dimensions. But what is this? Is this line or is this wave? Is that two dimensions or three dimensional? Line. It's two dimensional, right? So check it out. A wave is a two dimensional representation of a three dimensional phenomenon. <laughs> A wave is a two-dimensional representation of something that's happening in three dimensions. 
Something that's going in the circle and forward at the same time. You see this? What's what? going in a circle? The cookie was going in a circle. But with real waves. waves. And for, oh, that's a very good question. I'm not yeah, that's that. the fourth yeah. dimension. Mm -hmm. Skyler, that's the fourth Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Look at this. Thank you. Oh, come on. She's like, she is a true scholar. Look at this, guys. Look. Oh. It's, I think it'll be okay. Look. Here. Look at that. You guys see that? You guys see that? Whoa. You see that? Yes. What's happening? What's happening? This is moving. A point is moving around a circle. You see that? Yeah. But it's moving forward at the same time. Check it out. We got to wait. Is that cool, right? Nice. Thank you. Matt Gibbs. Cool. That's epic. Good job. Thank you. Cool. So... So what are we seeing? We're seeing, when we're looking at these waves, we're seeing a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional phenomenon, guys. That's, that's not where it ends, you know? Oh, there's you know more. what I mean? Wait, 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 wait. There's more. There's always oh, more. Guys. There's more. This is math class. All right, guys. Play around. Okay. Check it out. So, you guys remember that video that I showed you guys of the solar system? No. You guys remember that? No, I do. You don't? Okay, so in case you don't remember, I'm going to show you it now. So, check it out. So it's not only born. So check it out. What what was that showing us? It's showing us pla planets rotating around in a circle on the sun. But look, our solar system is moving through space, revolving around the center of the galaxy at seventy thousand kilometers per hour. So our sun isn't just stationary. Our sun is moving forward. And so what's happening? Well, what's happening is that. The sun is moving forward, and the planets are rotating around it at the same time. And if you look at it from the side, what does that look like? A wave. Right? So if you look at it from the side, it looks like a wave. That's pretty cool. Right? So, so eventually, eventually we get to the question, why is this important? Why is this important? Right? You guys probably remember this. Because life is like this. Life is spiraling. There's this spiral, there's this wave that's happening. Right? All throughout, all throughout all of life, all throughout all the universe, we see these spirals. Okay? Our own galaxy. That's why our sun, our sun is moving around the center of the galaxy, our DNA. Look. Look. For those of you that are like, wait, how is our sun moving forward in space? Look, let me explain it just real quick. Uh, the center of our galaxy is a black hole. Around that black hole, you have all these, these uh, solar systems and everything like that spinning around. This whole thing is spinning and rotating, right? Our sun is just one of these dots, right? And so as this whole thing rotates, our sun is moving along with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So our sun is moving forward. It doesn't look like it's rotating because the... Ain't the, the radius of rotation is so big that if you just look at it, it just looks like it's just going straight, you understand? But it's actually moving very, very fast, rotating around the center of our galaxy, which is a black hole, which is pretty cool. Now, not only that, check out the next picture. Look at that. That's what? What is that? DNA. 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 Let's say the DNA is a cookie, right? Look at it. It's going around in a circle and moving forward simultaneously. You see that? You guys see that? Okay, do you see that? And there's two of them, right? There's two cookies, right? Spiraling around each other. All right, so that's pretty cool.
right? And so we see all throughout creation, and this is what I took the time to show the other day, but now we understand where the waves kind of come from, right? All throughout creation, we see these waves, and if we were of the world, that's where we would stop. We would just be like, check out creation. How cool is creation? How cool is this world, right? But we're not of the world. We're just in the world. We're of God. And since we've been born again and we know the truth about Jesus Christ and about who the Lord is, we can't just allow it to stop at the point of the world. We've got to point it to God. And we've got to understand what it means in the context of the almighty, infinite, holy God who created the heavens and the earth. So let's talk about that. In the book of Genesis, in the beginning um, of the Bible, we're introduced to mankind, right? And where is mankind? Garden of Eden, right? Mankind's in the Garden of Eden. So here's the Garden of Eden. Bam. G-O-E. Right there. Garden of Eden. Okay. But when man is in the Garden of Eden, he's chilling at first, right? Yeah. But then what happens? He eats from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good and, evil and what happens? He, he falls. He goes down, right? So bam. Oh, no. So he goes down, right? And he falls. But then, who comes to earth? Jesus. God himself comes to earth and saves us, right? And so Jesus comes and saves us, and though we've fallen, we are risen with Christ, right? And then, we're risen with Christ, but now let's think about this, right? When Jesus comes again, we're going to have a new what and a new what? A new heaven and a new earth, right? So when Jesus comes again, we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. And that new heaven and new earth are going to be perfect. Perfect. God's creation, right? God's pure creation. And so in a sense, that new heaven and new earth is going to be like the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. So in a sense, what's happening is we're kind of moving around in this circle. Falling from the Garden of Eden to return to the Garden of Eden when the Lord comes again. And now if we were limited in our thought, we would just keep it there and be like, whoa, it's cool. It's like we're going in a circle. But wait a second. There's two things that make this not quite a circle, or it, it, there's something we got to add to it. So the first thing we got to add to it is the fact that humanity, are we the exact same as Adam? No. We've changed, right? We've eaten from the garden of, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We understand sin and death now, right? We understand it because we experience it all the time, right? We understand sin and death. Adam didn't know sin. Adam didn't know death until he sinned and died, right? So there was no man in the Garden of Eden that knew sin and death. And as soon as he sinned, bam, he fell, cast out of the Garden of Eden. You understand? So we are different. We are changed from Adam, right? And then when Jesus came into our hearts, we've been born again, right? So we've been going through this process of falling from grace to be reconciled through the blood of Jesus, right? Does that make sense? So man has progressed in the forward direction from Adam. You understand? We haven't just gone into a circle to turn to be exactly the same as Adam was. Does that make sense? So we progress in the forward direction. Now, let's also think about the Garden of Eden, right? The Garden of Eden started out as a garden, right? And what kind of things were in the Garden of Eden? Just call it out. Fruits. Fruit, plants. What else? Animals. Animals, fish, all sorts of stuff, right? Like, all sorts of really great stuff. You just imagine this lush, beautiful garden. Wait a second. Is that what's described in the new heaven and the new earth? In the book of Revelation, it says the new what will come down. It begins with a J. It's a place. Uh, Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem will come down. Jerusalem is a what? A city. So wait a second. It's not just a garden in this new heaven and new earth. It's a garden city. You see? So the Garden of Eden hasn't just kind of gone around in a circle either. right? We're going back to the exact Garden of Eden. It's like the Garden of Eden, but it's progressed forward. Does that make sense? So what's happened, guys? Shh, let's watch this, guys. Let's watch this. So we started at the Garden of Eden. We've progressed forward from the Garden of Eden. But we're also returning to it. So in a sense, it's not just a circle. It's a spiral. Does that make sense? You guys understand? Does that make sense? You see? So it's a spiral. And that spiral is going to continue out into eternity. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about another thing. I spoke with Pastor Shot about, about this just to make sure my doctrine was correct. And he, he gave me another example. He said, well, the world will tell you that, that time passes in cycles. 
The world will tell you that you've got seasons, right? You've got spring, you've got spring, you've got summer, you've got fall, and you've got winter, and then it happens again, right? Bam, in a circle. Does that make sense? And they'll tell you basically like the beginnings of the book of Ecclesiastes where all is vanity. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Time just goes around in circles. You know, if you guys have taken world religions, it's all reincarnation. You're just going to come back to earth and do it again, right? You guys heard, heard that kind of stuff? You've taken world religions? Yeah. So it's just nothing new under the sun. It's just time repeating itself over and over and over again. But wait a second. In the book of Genesis, what are the first words of the book of Genesis? In the beginning. What does it say? In the beginning, right? So... If it's got a beginning, then what does it also mean? It's got a what? End. An end, right? So our creation has a beginning and an end. And then after the end of our, our creation, there's going to be a new creation, a new heaven, a new earth, out into eternity, infinitely, right? So yes, we've got these cycles, but we've also got this forward motion through time. And so we have a spot. What is this showing us? What are we learning? What are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing is that all of these spirals in our creation, whether it's a DNA or it's our galaxy, right? Or a flower, right? The small, the big, or the in-between. There are these spirals that exist, and these spirals are pointing us to the gospel, They're pointing us to this truth that we started here at the Garden of Eden. We've fallen. We will return to the Garden of Eden, but we will have progressed since then. It's pointing us to this truth. It's telling us, hey, wait a second. You're not just stagnant. You're not just meaningless. You're not just come from muck. We'll, we'll continue to muck and just from dust to dust. Yes, your flesh will, but you are not just your flesh. You understand? You are going somewhere. And you will return to the place from which you came in God's holiness, in the presence of God's holiness, but you will have progressed from them. You see? These spirals that we see in our DNA aren't just a part of us. They're a part of the fabric of the story of creation and redemption and reconciliation and grace and heaven and holiness through Christ. So the fingerprints of God all over the universe. So why do we study this? Why did I take the time? Guys, I could have just dropped you into trigonometry the way that your book does. And don't get me wrong, I like the book. It's a good book. I've obviously used it quite a bit in this class. But the way your book drops you into trigonometry is it says, here's the basics. And it starts you on the menial, tiniest little bit of trigonometry. Right? And it gives you none of the scope. It gives you none of this. Wait a second, I'm studying trigonometry, I'm studying waves, I'm studying this. No, 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 no. In the book, you're just studying these little trigonometric ratios. So Katoa, sine, cosine, tangent. You guys remember that stuff? Right? That's where it drops you in. It says, this is what's important, this is what you need to know. And guess what? If I just gave you that, check it out. Probably a lot of you guys in here, most of you, would learn it, you'd study it, you'd understand it, you'd get tested on it, you'd forget it. And not saying that there's anything bad. It's just that's the way it is. You've got eight classes. You've got a whole bunch of other things going on. If the only context of this mathematics was just this one simple, limited, discrete thing that has no bearing on the rest of your life, then you learn it. You learn it until you get tested on it. Maybe you'll use it again in college or something. But chances are you'll just kind of let it lay where it lays, right? Put the test in your binder and just move forward. Does that make sense? And while you're doing it, you just say, okay, this step, and then you go on to the next step, whatever the next step I threw at you in mathematics. Does that make sense? And you'd move forward in that step, and you move forward in that step, and move forward in that step. And then at the end of it, you'd just be like, cool, I passed this class, I'm done with it, right? But do we really understand? That's the question. That's the question. And honestly, without the context, we can't understand. Without the context, we can't understand, and life can be like that, y'all. Life can be like that sometimes. When you go through life, right, you're a kid, right? You're in, you're in class, right? You're like, oh, man, I got to study this. I got to get a good grade on this test. Cool. Now I got to study this next thing and get a good grade on this test. Now I got to study for the final. I got to do this project. I got to make sure I'm doing this. I got to, you know, extracurricular activities. I got to 
play this game, I gotta do well, you know, oh, I gotta do my chores, I gotta, and you're just moving forward one step at a time, right? The next task and the next task. And then you get to college, right? And you're in college and you're just like, okay, now I gotta study hard to do this test, and I gotta pass this. Oh, I, oh, before college, right? I gotta apply to college, I gotta get into college, I gotta get money, I gotta do these things, and you're marching forward one step at a time, right? Oh, I gotta, gotta get a good, after college, I gotta get a good job, and I gotta get married, and have a good family, and now I gotta get a new house, and then I gotta get a good this and this, and then I gotta make sure I take care of my retirement. And all of a sudden, you're over here, you're about to walk out of your life, right, to death, right? And then God, on the other side of that door is heaven, for those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But check it out. What have you done the whole time? You've just been looking at the one step ahead of you and not recognizing what's actually going on in your life. There's a saying about that that says you can't see the forest from the trees. You guys ever hear this saying? You can't see the forest from the trees. I didn't understand that for like years, and I was just like, I don't even get it. Well, what does it mean? If you're in the midst of a giant forest, right, you can't see the forest from the trees, right, because all you're seeing is the tree ahead of you and then the next tree and maybe the trees around you, but you don't even recognize you're in the midst of a vast forest. You're in the middle of a rainforest. You don't know you're in the middle of a rainforest. You just see, like, the trees ahead of you, you understand? So when you can't see the forest from the trees, basically it means you can understand what's directly in front of you and around you, but you don't understand or see the big concept and why it all matters. You understand? So we need context for our lives, and check it out. If we're just walking through life, looking around us, maybe we're in math class, and, and our context is math class. Or maybe we're at home, and our context is our family. Or maybe we're at work, and our context is our job. And we're just walking through life, and we're getting the context from our surroundings and the world around us. Check it out. Number one, we're going to be pretty hopeless. Why? Because this world is falling. And the more you look at this world, the more you realize it's falling. Right? So first off, we're going to be hopeless, and second off, we're not going to know our purpose. We're not going to know our meaning. We're not going to know what we're supposed to do, why we're supposed to do it at all, okay? You might know what you're supposed to do in a given moment, but you're not going to know why you're supposed to do it, right? You're going to have no foundation. We have to get in the Word. We have to read the Bible. We have to read the Bible. If we're not reading the Word, we're basing the context of our life on our situation in the world around us. But when we get into the Word, y'all, when we get into the book that God has written for us and given to us, guess what? We are given the context for our lives. We see that I'm not just a math teacher. I'm not just Kevin Gordon Manier. That's my middle name, by the way, Gordon. Gordon Hayward, good to meet you. I'm not just Kevin Gordon Manier, you know, uh, husband of Elizabeth, son of Sharon and Julian, grandson of Fred and Helene. No, that's not just me. I'm not just that. I am a son of God. That's who I am. And I'm not just here to be a math teacher. I'm called to a holy calling. That's who I am. That's my purpose. We need context. And we need context for everything that we do. Without that context, we're lost. And so why did I take the time to give you guys this context? Is because I want us to understand that when we're studying this concept, when we're studying trigonometry, we're not just getting lost and listen to me, listen to me. We're not just doing this because we got to do one more step. We got to put it together. We got to put the pieces together in our life. Why am I here? Why am I learning this? What is this teaching me about God? What is it teaching me about myself? What's the purpose? We got to put the puzzle pieces together. So I've given you this context. And I hope that you guys see and understand that when we're studying trigonometry, we're not just learning about waves and cool triangles. We're learning about God. So that's the context. Now, that we have the context, we got to, like Miss Ambrose will say, we got to make sure we're focused on the cross, right? We got to make sure we're focused on the cross, but we also got to mind our steps, right? If I'm just focused on the cross and I'm not seeing that there's like, a rabid wolf in front of me, and I'm just like, ah, Jesus, I believe in you. He's like, dude, look at the wolf, you know? Like, no, I gotta make sure I'm like, oh, or there's a cliff, right? That's a better example, right? I'm like, Jesus, I believe in you, Lord, I praise you. And he's like, there's a cliff right in front of you, don't walk off it, right? You gotta mind your steps, right? So you gotta have the context, but you also gotta know the practicals. It's both, they're true. So we gotta understand the practicals of trigonometry as well, and so that's where we begin, all right, again. So check it out. I've made this thing on Desmos that I want to show you guys. I've made this thing on Desmos that I want to show you guys. So take a look. 
Take a look. So here we see we have a circle. And remember when we started our lesson on trigonometry, we started by plotting points around a circle and we used what to plot those points? Triangles, right? So here we are again with a circle and a triangle. Bam. This angle here is 30 degrees. And what you see is the radius is equal to 1. I've got this triangle and I've got the coordinates of the point. You see? I've got the coordinates of the point right there. Now, on your handout, I want everyone to open up to the third page. Or the second page, rather, where it says cosine and sine. And right below sine, I want you guys to draw a triangle that looks exactly like this. Okay? So draw a triangle that looks exactly like that. And I'll do the same. Bam. See? Now, what type of triangle is this? What type of triangle? It's a right triangle. Good. And since that's a right triangle, what do I know about this side? What's it called? It's called the... Hypotenuse, good. On this thing, I have just an H, right? But you guys are going to label it as hypotenuse. So go ahead and draw that on there, hypotenuse. And while you're at it, go ahead and label your angle, this angle that's here. Okay, see this angle? Now, I, I know this is the hypotenuse, but what are these two sides called, the other two sides in a right triangle? Legs. legs, good. Now I want to distinguish between the legs. Now if I use this angle here, this leg is opposite of the angle, right? So I'm going to call that the opposite side. I'm going to call that opposite. So go ahead on your picture, label it opposite. Joshua was just hanging out. He's like, I don't have one of those. Here you go, sir. I got you, man. Anybody else need one? Okay. So you're going to label that opposite. And then this side, this side here is touching the angle. So we label that adjacent. Now, you might say, oh, this is touching the angle as well. Well, yeah, but that's hypotenuse. I'm talking about the adjacent leg. So we're going to call that the adjacent side. So we have the opposite leg and the adjacent leg, but co for convenience we just refer to them as opposite and adjacent. The hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Got it? Okay. So, once we've got this, we need to talk about something. Let's take a look. This side the length of this side, we remember, was the x-coordinate, right? If the radius was 1, the length of this side right here is just the x-coordinate, right? And the length of this side is just the y-coordinate, right? Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Now, take a look up here. Up here I have two ratios. I have the ratios adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse. Can you guys see that? So I have the two ratios, adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse. Now, when the radius is just equal to 1, well, if my opposite side is 0.866 and my hypotenuse is 1, well, then my ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse or I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, what was that? Sorry, the opposite side here is 0.5. Sorry about that, guys. Opposite side is 0.5. You guys don't have to even take this down. I just want you to watch. The ratio of opposite over hypotenuse is 0.5 over 1, which is just 0.5. See? So the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse is just the same thing as the length of the side. Right? And then adjacent over hypotenuse, well, the length of the adjacent side is 0.866. 
So adjacent over hypotenuse is 0.866 over 1, which is just 0.866. You guys see that? So look, you see the ratio opposite over hypotenuse is 0.5. The length of that side is 0.5. The ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse is 0.866. The length of the adjacent side is 0.866. Does that make sense to you guys? You understanding this? So I've got these ratios, opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse. And when the radius is 1, it's just equal to that side. But now let's think about this for a second. What if I make the radius equal to 2? If I make the radius equal to 2, what's going to happen to these sides? If I double the radius, these sides are going to double, right? And so the ratio between them, is that going to change or will it stay the same? It'll stay the same. Well, let's think about this in a different way. If I increase the radius, look at those triangles. Is that, are these triangles the same exact shape? Yeah, yeah. are they different size? Yeah. yeah, so what does that make them? Same. Similar. If I have similar triangles, what do I know about the ratios of sides? They're the same. Check it out. And look, watch, watch these ratios. I'm increasing my radius and decreasing my radius, and the ratios stay exactly the same. Does that make sense? So if I'm given a certain angle, then I know my ratios. But let's, let's look at it now again. What about if I change the angle? So I'm going to put my radius back to 1. My ratio changes, stays the same. What about if I change my angle? What do you think will happen to my ratios? Will they stay the same or change? Change. Look. Watch. Bam. You see that? My ratios are changing. What does this show us? This shows us that as long as I have a certain angle, the ratio will be the same. It will be constant, no matter how big or small the triangle is. Does that make sense? So the rate, but if I change the angle, then the ratio changes, right? What does this show us? The ratio is not dependent upon the size of the triangle. It's dependent upon the size of the angle. See? The ratio is dependent upon the angle. Now... Mathematicians don't like to be inefficient. So rather than saying the ratio opposite over hypotenuse all the time, they just say the sine of an angle. The sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And instead of saying adjacent over hypotenuse, they say the cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, a lot of times this is where people start thinking this is magic, right? the cosine of an angle, the sine of an angle, it's because it's just shorthand. Instead of saying, instead of saying, oh, I have a triangle, and the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse when I have an angle equal to 47 degrees is this. Instead of saying that big long thing, I just say the sine of 47 degrees is this. Does that make sense to you? The sign is interchangeable with the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. Does that make sense to you guys? Now, remember what I said. When the radius was equal to 1, what did I say about the ratios? They were just equal to the side lengths, right? You remember this? And the side lengths give us the coordinates of the point, right? So the coordinates are equal to the side lengths, and the side lengths are equal to the ratio. Transitive property of equality says the coordinates are equal to the ratios. And that's exactly what we see. 0 0.682, 0 0.682, 0 0.73, 0 0.73. You see this? So the coordinates of the point is equal to the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over hypotenuse, right? Does it make sense? Now, when you talk about the graphs that you guys plotted, I hope you guys are with me. You know it's late in the day. But listen, listen to this. When you talked about, we talked about those graphs that you guys plotted, right? What were you plotting in those graphs? What were you plotting? But, yes, right. But what were you plotting? The what? The x and the y coordinates. You were plotting the x and the y coordinates, but without your knowledge, you were actually plotting the sine and the cosine which is these ratios, because the x and y coordinates are just equal to these ratios, by plotting the x and y coordinates, you were actually plotting the cosine of the sine. Does that make sense to you guys? Is that pretty clear? Okay, everyone stand up. You guys are way too busy. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Oh.
Up, 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 up. Stand up, stand up. Okay. All right. We're just going to stretch out because I need these next 10 minutes, but you guys really got to be with me, okay? Because you're going to miss it. Because this is where we connect the dots. We got to connect the dots. We got to connect the dots. Okay. All right. Now, jumping jack. No, I'm just kidding. All right, everybody do this. Everybody do this. Stretch up as high as you possibly can and stretch your fingers all the way to the sky as high as you possibly can. And then go like this and stretch all the way out. Stretch your wings. And then down. And then go backwards. Stretch your wings. Stretch the sky. All the way up. And then take off. All right, go ahead. All right, sit down. All right. Now check it out. Let me ask you something. So we were plotting those graphs, right? But when we were plotting those points, but so take a look at this, right? On the very back of your, on the very back of your handout, you see that you've got the sine graph, okay? If we need to figure out the sine angle, we can use the graph, right? Now, we see that this only goes from 0 to 90. You guys see that? From 0 to 90 degrees. Why does it only go from 0 to 90 degrees? Well, first off, first off, when you were plotting the points around the circle, you just plotted the first quadrant, right? Once you plotted the first quadrant, were you able to get the other quadrants? Yeah, what's the first quadrant go to? From 0 to 90. Bam, 0 to 90, right? So all you need is the first quadrant. You can figure out everything else from 0 to 90. Also, take a look at this triangle. Can this angle ever be more than 90 degrees? Let's take a look. Absolutely. If it gets close to 90, look what happens. Oh Bam, just God. a straight line. Well, what about here? Is this angle is more than 90? No. This angle is more than 90, but this angle is what I'm interested in. That angle can never be more than 90 degrees in a right triangle. Does that make sense to you guys? So you're only going to ever need from 0 to 90 degrees. Now, once we have that, we can begin the very simple basics. Okay, we have the context, we've connected the dots, we understand that when we look at this graph, we're understanding that it's not, shh, it's not just a graph of the x and y coordinates, it's a graph of the ratios of the sides, right? Which is shorthand for talking about the ratios of those sides is sine and cosine. Does that make sense? So that's what this graph is, not just x and y coordinates, it's the ratios of the sides, or sine and cosine. Now, we've zoomed in to 90 degrees, and now we can take a look at this handout that I've given you guys. So everyone take a look at this handout here, and specifically look at number four. All right, shh, shh. Be with me. Number four. If I take a look at my handout, I see that the sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? So let's go ahead and write that. Here's my angle. Here is my opposite side. And here is my hypotenuse. So I recognize that the sine of my angle the sine of my angle is 40, uh, 46 degrees. So here's sine of 46 degrees equals the opposite, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which is x. The sine of 46 degrees equals opposite, which is 8, over hypotenuse, which is x. Cool? But I want to solve for x, okay? This is what this problem is asking you for. It says solve for x, right? I need trigonometry to be able to solve for x, okay? So how do I do it? What's the first step? The algebra of it. I got to multiply both sides by x, right? X is on the bottom. I got to get it off the bottom. I get x times sine of 46 degrees equals 8. You could be writing on your homework as I do this. What do I do now? I got to get x by itself, right? How do I do it? I divide by sine of 46 degrees. Right? That cancels out. 
and I'm left with x equals h over sine of 46 degrees, right? Does that make sense to you guys? So now the question is, how do I get the sine of 46 degrees? How do I get the sine of 46 degrees? Well, I take a look. No, see, that's the thing. If I just dropped you off the face of the earth straight into trigonometry, you would say calculator. But we know better. We know better. So what do we use? Shh, shh, shh. We use the graph. Check it out. On the back of your handout, you have the graph. Look, you can get the sine of 46 by using this graph. Look, each one of these ticks is... Pay attention, guys. I only have like two minutes left, so I need you guys to pay attention. You find 46 degrees. Each one of these ticks is 2. So 40, 42, 44, 46 is here. I trace it up. I find where it intersects. That's right here. Each one of these ticks is 0.5. So this is 0 0.65, 0 0.7, 0.75. So where does that intersect? Well, it intersects right here, just, just below, in between 0.7 and 0.75, right? But not quite halfway. So what's a good guess? 0 0.72. 0 0.72, sure. So I'm going to guess that the sine of 46 degrees, based on my graph, is 0.72. So I say x equals 8 over 0.72. I plug that into my calculator and I get 8 over 0.72 is 11 or 11.1 and I've solved for x. Okay. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. So this is the basics. Now check it out. What's your homework, guys? Your homework is this worksheet. Um, Gosh, I might have handed you guys some that don't have them crossed out, so you pay attention now, okay? You don't have to do all of them. The ones you don't have to do are 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 11. So you don't have to do those. You do not have to do those, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Don't do those ones. Do all the rest. If you don't have them crossed out, make sure you cross those out, okay? All right, any questions? No. All right, good job, class. That's all for the day.